All right, we're here at Bhakti Fest 2017. Hi, everybody. Hello, 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 Adam. So good to be here with you all. Tell us what's happening. Tell us what's going on with the new album. Oh, man, we are celebrating the release on the 22nd of September okay, of my new album, light. Wonderville. Bhakti we got Fest, pre sale open now through the 21st. It's Saturday. Um, so you can get your advanced up, copy of this dance. through uh, the Montrology site. Good. And close. it's uh, an album of new material. I'm delighted to release it. We've been working on it the last year or two with Ben Lineback in the production it's seat. True. And it's lush oh, and beautiful so and sweet. If I don't say so myself, it's a pretty listen. And we're going to just make a little splash. And letting people Please know about welcome. it. So. Tell us about your entry into the world of Man, I was plucked by Neem Karoli Baba's grace. I was just minding my own business, and I had met Krishna Das one time, gone to one or two of his programs, and he tapped me on the shoulder one day, and he said, you play bass, right? Because my bass player just left on her own career, and I need someone to play with me on some upcoming gigs. Do you want to sit in? And that turned into a seven-year gig, basically playing bass with one of the pioneers of bringing devotional chant music from India to the West. And that was a life changer and a heart opener and a bit of grace in action. How did you come to the harmonium? You were a bass player. I was a bass player, still a bass player for many, many years, but um, I bought a harmonium in India, actually. I was in Delhi, I picked up a harmonium, I brought it home, and I put it in my closet for about three or four years. And one day, I just had the inspiration, like, sit down at that harmonium. And so I sat down in this harmonium, and within, I swear, less than five minutes, <laughs> the sound of the harmonium just started basically melting my heart open, and I just and I started wanting to sing. It was such a it was such a lovely, soft, forgiving pad of sound. I was just like, oh, I just wanna I wanna offer my voice into this sound, and suddenly I just basically became a singer overnight. I'm not sure how that happened. I'm still learning how to sing, but. When it springs from the heart, I think all is forgiven, basically. So. One of the things that's a little different about this album is that it incorporates both Sanskrit and English into the mantra. True enough, you know, Sanskrit is the name of the game for mantra recitation, but, you know, I am an English-speaking person, and there's something about tapping into our mother tongue that allows us access to a different part of our brain and our heart, I think. so. The Sanskrit opens up things that I don't even understand because it's a sacred language that's beyond my capacity to understand, but it's real and it's powerful. But the English sometimes just allows us to feel the familiarity of what words and ideas are. And when we, when we kind of merge those two, the ancient scientific language of Sanskrit with the modern ridiculousness of English, we get to tap into the sort of balanced nature of who we are, and it allows us a fuller expression of the nature of devotion and reality and our own search for our place in it. So it just seemed like the next thing to start singing a little bit in English, too. Adam, you're releasing this album at age 53, but this path has been uh, no stranger to you. Can you talk about your teenage years and what, what steps you took as you started initiating yourself on this journey? Sure. Well, first of all, I think I obviously I look younger than 53, but you know, I'm, I'm trying to age well. Um, no, I basically discovered the world of healing work, massage therapy and shamanic healing and breathing exercises when I was about 16 years old. I fell into a community of people in Cambridge, Massachusetts, where I grew up. And through those experiences, I basically found myself getting kind of deeper into the journey of self-discovery. And after I graduated high school, when traveling out to California for a few months, I came home and I realized, like, actually, I'm going to be a monk here because America's nonsense. And I don't want to play this game. I don't want to succeed in 1982 America. Reagan is too much for me. So I basically became a monk. I took my vows of celibacy and poverty and renunciation when I was 18. And I thought I would do that probably the rest of my life because it felt so natural and so proper, so good. And I just focused for years on 
service and being sort of a hollow bone for the divine inspiration to hopefully come through me in some way so that I could be a blessing in the world. And I lived that way for three years in a small community of people doing healing work every day. And then, you know, stuff happens and when I was 21 or so I realized, oh, I guess I'm not actually supposed to be a monk for the rest of my life. And rejoining the world was a little rugged at that point. But I just tried to navigate, how do I bring renunciation? How do I bring service? How do I bring a desire to love people beyond my own personal benefit? How do I bring that into the world? It's easy when you're a monk in a way, but you know, when you're trying to like pay rent and like keep it all going, you know, to just remember like, how do I do what I'm doing so that it's a benefit to the people around me and the world around me and not just striving for my own thing. So I never really shook the kind of renunciation part. I, I did give up the vows of, of poverty and celibacy, but I never really gave up the renunciation thing because I want my life to be an offering to the divine and the beloved, not just like, how do I, you know, make myself the focus of the action. So. so many of the audiences here have experienced the wonder of your music, and it's no surprise to me that the title of your album is Wonderville. How'd you come to that? I'm not really quite sure how Wonderville came as an album title, but it reflects my general orientation about life, which is my God, this is a world of wonder and miracle and transcendent presence. And and it's easy to access that if we just look for it, basically. The wonder is everywhere. So I feel like Wonderville's the town I live in, man. It's just like how it is possible to remain childlike and wide-eyed and connected to the miracle and wonder that is life in a body, life on this planet. I feel like this is all a cosmic manifestation and I want to remember the wonder and I want us all when we do this game to remember the sweetness and the wonder of all of it. So I want to live in Wonderville. That's where my P.O. box is and I'm inviting everybody to come and join me because it's where we live. We just have to remember it and remember it. Thank you so much, Adam. I just want to remind everybody today that you can download Adam's album online. And of course, if you do that before September 21st, one of the things that happens in the music industry is all the people that pre-order an artist's music add up and all those people, all those albums that get donated or get downloaded just like yours, they add up and that's how a musician hits a number on the world music chart. So if you want to support Al um, Adam today, go ahead and download his album and then you'll pre-order it and you'll get it on September 22nd when it comes out. And the benefit is that if you want to spread his, mo his message of wonder and help other people visit this Wonderville town that he lives in, you'll be able to help him do that by downloading that album today. My name is Meredith Sassy and you're watching Yoga News TV and we're here at Bhakti Fest 2017. Live and direct. Get in the vibe.